been covering this Fulford story and um, I released uh, information about something that is much more secret than UFOs and I have been I was called today after I put this online and uh, this particular individual was called by uh, two different people and one of them said do you like David Wilcock that was how he started the conversation and uh, you know he said that uh, both of these people basically said the same thing which is that uh, I need to get part two of the article out tonight uh, they wouldn't go into detail but I was told that uh, that if I was tortured, that it, that that would be lucky, and uh, that probably I wouldn't make it. But that if I get through the next three days, uh, it'll probably be okay. But that. I would be much safer if I could get this information out tonight because uh, I was led to believe that if if someone is going to come and, and talk to me and give me the gun or the money game where they try to buy me out or threaten me with death and maybe narco hypnosis or something like that, mind control kind of things, I don't know. But that basically all I have before that team – would show up here is tonight. So I felt like, I'm sorry for crying. I to tell us the story. Because this okay. is going to protect you. The truth. Okay. We're putting it out there. This is going to, this is what's going to protect you. Okay. Once okay. it's out there, they can't touch you. It's in the public domain. So let's okay. get it out there. All right. <clears throat> I'll pull it together. Fulford has never. Okay. I guess, okay, the context. This is what I now know. I have been in cut. I've been in touch with Benjamin Fulford. He came out on the scene in 2007, as we all know. And what he ultimately has been saying is that there's an alliance of 117 nations, and those nations are aligned against the Illuminati, which, if you don't know, is the secret political leadership of the G5 countries, and not a whole lot else anymore. They were running a lot of other countries by proxy. They were having puppet dictators running a lot of these countries in the Middle East and in Africa. And those countries are now claiming back their sovereignty. And the tip of the spear of what they have been planning to blow this whole thing open is a lawsuit. Fulford has been talking about this lawsuit on his website for at least a year and a half. The website was published. It was filed. Fulford said it would be filed on November 15th. It was filed on November 23rd. 
It's 111 pages long. It's incredibly intricate. I downloaded it when it first showed up. I thought it was bullshit when it first showed up because they quoted from Wikipedia regarding the Davos World Economic Forum. I wrote a long missive on Benjamin Fulford's website saying that I thought this thing was bullshit. Uh, after that, the people who were responsible for filing the lawsuit contacted me personally. We began a relationship which has led to an extensive amount of contact. They have sent me over 500 photographs. They have sent me dozens of documents. These documents apparently have put a bounty on my head. I now have seen the Book of Maklumat, the Book of Codes. I have seen the exact documentation that will bring these people down. It's in my possession. I am soon going to be getting it, very soon going to be getting it to other people who already have the Wilcock file. You people know who you are. Please do not inspect the file. Only go with Category 1 distribution if something happens to me. If you look in the revealing folder, I have a list of criteria. Do not release Category 2 unless the criteria of the revealing folder are met. At least three of the points in that folder must be met before you release Category 2. But Category 1 would only occur if I am killed. Okay, If you don't hear from me in three or four days then go ahead and put it out there. In addition to that, if I put out a code phrase, as you guys know, because it's in the revealing folder, and that code phrase says that if you see that in my next update, then you have to go with distribution plan one. And that's all in the folder. Okay, so this is what we need to do. This is the plan that I put in place. I never expected I would need to use this. Carrie, you know I told you I recorded everything. It's It's a betrayal, but I recorded everything that happened when I was on the phone with uh, Henry Deacon. I told him this when he was out here. That's part of what's in that file. There's a lot of other very juicy things in that file. Don't make me do this, please. Listen to this one and ask yourself, why is no one covering this story? There is a fake bond scam, we think. Two middle-aged Japanese men reportedly caught trying to cross from Italy into Switzerland with $134 billion in bonds. $134 billion, remember that number. It presents two possibilities, both are really bad. Either they're fake, which means people are trying to flood the market with fake cash and it's probably a country doing that, because um, remember bonds are the same as cash, or worse, it's real. And some country, some sovereign fund, is trying to quietly dump their reserves. It would have to be a country if they're real, because nobody has this much money. That is 1% of our GDP. We just got uh, no comment from the Treasury Department. They said, oh, we have received your question about U.S. bonds. We have received your question about U.S. bonds seized at the Italian border. These bonds are evidence in an ongoing investigation. We will not be able to comment at this time. Sorry, we can't be more help, U.S. Treasury. $134 billion of bonds. Uh, can we put the chart up on, on which countries have that much? Um, here are the top uh, foreign holders of U.S. Treasuries. China, $763 billion. Japan, 685 United Kingdom, 152 billion. Russia, 137. The value of the smuggled bonds, 134 billion. That's gigantic sums of money. Either way, it's an incredible scale, whether it's a government dumping some of their holdings or if it's a counterfeit operation, it's unlike anything we've ever seen, not just in size, but also sophistication. The fact that it's this long before they can just dismiss them as being fake or say these are real. Right. So who would have the technology to fake that? Would that be North Korea? And I, would, I would imagine any government that prints, that prints currency could probably uh, procure a printer, you know, extremely high quality printer. Right. So this would be a, 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 you think it only possibly a government would be able to do this? It would be the kind of technology that you would expect only a government to have. Okay. Um, and if they are um, real, this is, this is what people... Well, every day the market wakes up to some news of someone in Russia or China or Japan making some comment on the dollar. Either they're getting nervous about holding it or 
Some days they come out and say they're confident in the dollar, but the market's completely on edge on this question. Will foreign governments keep buying our debt? So if it is real, and if there is a foreign government that's sort of secretly trying to dump some of their dollar holdings, that's a big story. That really tips the story in one direction. Apparently these bonds are old, and they come from the 50s and the 60s. Well, that's uh, one of the questions that makes people question its veracity. These types of bonds, Kennedy bonds, supposedly would be issued in the 50s or 60s. Um, the reason that they were, I mean, $500 million fa dollar face value bond, it's almost hard to believe that we ever issued those. Apparently the reason was, you know, they're uh, bearer bonds. You have to send in a coupon and collect the money. Well, if you're borrowing a lot of money, you, ha you want to have huge coupons because otherwise it's just too much right. of a pain to keep sending them in. There were some reports that said the date on the bond was from 1934. That would lend uh, credence to the idea that it's some sort of counterfeit fraud operation. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. We'll follow this um, because one way or another, it's not good. Somebody is trying to f print mass amounts of our money, and which would be... Well, our Fed is doing it, our Treasury is doing it, why not everybody? And the other is, people are starting to tire of our nonsense here.